this is a school vehicle. There's cameras and microphones in here so they can see that I brought you here. You threw a kid into the ceiling? I'm so sorry, Mom. <laughs> Man, I was homeschooled and missed all this. And if you put new batteries in, it, it wouldn't work. But there would still be days where the toys would go off by yeah, itself. All the time. For the longest time, I keep seeing my aunt dying in my dreams. Um, last night, my mom texted me while I'm in my room and says they think she's not going to make it throughout the week. Welcome to Haunted Homies, a podcast dedicated to building the paranormal community and hearing terrifying stories from those who attend. Wow, this is our first ever live show in a sauna. <laughs> okay, so we have a presentation ready for everyone. We're just going to plug it in really quick. <laughs> Uh, thank you all so much for being here and, and coming out and enjoying our uh, Paranormal 101 uh, class that we're hosting today. <laughs> yeah, we actually are. Yeah! Yeah! I got, I'll, I'm going to be straight up. Iowa right now, the most lit crowd we've had the whole tour. So. <laughs> Wait, do, do, do you guys say yee yee here or no? Yee yee! Hey, let me get a yee yee on three. Yee yee on three. One, two, three. Yee yee! I can't wait to do an EVP session tonight. Be like, if there's a spirit here, can you please repeat? Yee, yee. <laughs> That's what we're going to be asking for tonight. That's how we're going to investigate? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just All right. Yee. I'm down for that. Okay. Can you can you please tell uh, everyone what happened in the RV at 6 in the morning last night? I guess technically this morning. Yeah. So uh, last night's investigation, and it was really good. It was actually a really good investigation, but it definitely felt evil. And so uh, we had Patty with us. I'm sure a few of you know Patty. Yeah, make some noise for Patty. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had her cleanse us. We had her close the veil. But then um, Marty, who's right over here, uh, he is very spiritual as well. And uh, he had, he had, uh, <laughs> Marty didn't think, I asked Marty last night if we could tell the story. And he said, yeah, now he's regretting that decision. So, Marty is uh, Estonian, and so he was telling me something to say in Estonian that was supposed to protect me, okay? So, I'm in the RV for a good minute, and I'm just, I'm chanting this chant that he told me to say, and it's in Estonian, so I have no idea what I'm saying. You know exactly what it means. Now I do! <laughs> so, at the end of the day, after I am screaming this thing in the RV. Can you please give him a full reenactment of what it was? Okay, I, I need I need you all to know this was about this was about 6:10 in the morning. We had just dropped off Patty at the airport and we're exhausted. And can you please re recreate what happened in the RV literally okay. 12 and a half hours ago? Okay, so this is me. I'm walking in a circle and I'm going ghost Emo muene, gusa alid. Emo muene, gusa alid. What does that mean? It means ghost. Where are you? Suck my balls. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank you, Marty, uh, for that. I th I think it would have attracted more ghosts than pushed them away. I think I I pissed some off. I definitely. I probably pissed some ghosts off last night. Yeah, and you also said that super close to our trailer full of haunted items. So Annabelle heard you and was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I thought I was cleansing myself. And well, I'm just like, suck my balls. Well, suck my balls. No, you were asking the demons to cleanse you. Oh, correct. <laughs> correct. So maybe it did work. Maybe it did. Thank you, Marty. Thank you. Very nice of you. <laughs> Good times. Oh, that was so funny. Yeah. It's, it, I love that we're now on the point of tour. This is actually a show 20, night 20 of like actual shows on the tour. But we're now getting to the point where like pranks are becoming more common. Mm -hmm. In Eloise, I pulled off the master class of pranks. It was the f best one I've done in years. So our structure of our show is at the end of the show, we read stories that people have written. Uh, and then we read them and we bring them on stage. So the first story, I think Corey read and we brought them on stage. Yeah. And then the next story... It was my turn to read, and I was like, hey, Evan, we've all had to act out stories before. Do you want to act one out? And I wrote the entire story 
But that, we didn't we didn't know that Elton wrote the story, okay? I we intentionally it wrote submitted. it for two people. So it was Evan and Corey acting out. I think at one point, uh, they went on a tangent about their dad went skiing. Yeah. And then their father also remembered their own birth. Mm -hmm. uh, so you guys had to get I had born. to demonstrate the birth. And then there was a lot of cuddling and a yes. lot of screaming. And a we lot were of straddling you each other. You guys scissored on stage. <laughs> we're not going to talk about You listen. scissored. We're not going to talk for about record, that part. I didn't write that. I had just... <laughs> I just said they, I just said they held on to each other, and they took the liberty to just li listen. You took the we, you took the the leisure of lady on stage, so you know what I mean. Like you took that initiative, which is so weird because also the story is about teenagers. Now that we think about it, pretty weird, dude. Shut up. Okay. No, we were dedicated to the story, and the story said they were straddling, so we did our best to recreate that. I somehow got. Evan an applause break in the middle of it because I wrote about that they thought they were going to die and right before like that final moment where they thought the demon was going to kill him one friend confessed to the other that they cheated on their boyfriend with them mm -hmm. and then somehow you slapped Evan and Evan slapped you and the audience was like yeah way to go girl way to go yeah yeah no it was it was hilarious you literally wrote something like we are safe now the demon is gone but I will never forgive you for <laughs> cheating on me with Steven and but the whole audience just stands up and everyone's clapping it was beautiful it really was it was very empowering my absolute favorite part was at the end of every story we'd then read the name of the person that wrote it and then ask them to come join us on stage so we do the whole story it, it, you know that was 17 minutes you guys were on stage acting that out why did you write such a long story i didn't you scissored forever <laughs> you, you you made it that long wow. of a story it just it i just kept seeing you guys were just latching on to each other i was like all right i'll just wait until you're done i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess time just didn't really exist during that moment. <laughs> The best part is the story is over and I go, okay, um, the person that wrote this, if you please wouldn't mind coming to the stage, uh, Elton Caste. <laughs> and everyone in the room was quiet for like eight seconds. Like literally no one spoke. Everyone was like, and then Evan goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good times. <laughs> so much fun. Evan was petrified and then also high fived me and then cried. It was yeah. the beautiful moment. Evan was drained after Evan, that. Evan couldn't speak, dude. <laughs> it was like it was like, you know, like when you're ghost hunting and you tell the spirits, you're like, you can take my energy. I took that energy. <laughs> Evan worked out a whole set of muscles he's not used to working out. <laughs> Those hips went to work, baby. <laughs> oh God. Uh. And it's on video. It is on video, <laughs> and it's amazing. <sighs> okay, should I confess? We talked about this earlier. We did. Uh, I've, as, as you know, I've done pranks in the past on YouTube, on Vine. Uh, there's actually two pranks I pulled off in high school that to this day, nearly 15 years later, no one knows was me. No one knows. And I thought it was fitting to talk about it because we are in Farrar. We're at the elementary school here. Mm -hmm. We're in a classroom. And I'm curious to see if anyone has ever done a prank similar to this or better. And I would really love to hear if anyone else has pulled off any malicious pranks like this. I want to hear this, though. There was one prank I pulled off in junior year of high school that caused the entire school to get shut down for a day. And to this day, no one knows it's me. I got away with it cold and clean. Wait, what if like one of your old teachers is listening to this? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> what are they, they going to do? You're going to get suspended. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if they try and come after me, all I got to do is just write their name and put it in a Dybbuk box. No one's touching me. You can't come after me. <laughs> You're going to mail them a picture of the shadow doll. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want you have that speeding ticket, officer? <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. All right. So every year it's a tradition. I'm sure some high schools had this where there's always a senior prank. It was, there's always a senior prank. And I came into school as a sophomore, like very tail end of sophomore year. And then I knew the next year as a junior, there's going to be senior prank. And I was like, oh, no one's going to suspect a junior of doing a prank. I can do whatever I want. And they'll just only look at the senior class. And my uh, school had, everyone had to leave their books in the lockers. Like you could not take them home with you. It was just like the rule of the school. And everyone had orange lockers, black locks, white numbers. And I knew every day that the like the janitor would come in at like five in the morning. And like I kind of knew his route and everything like that. So I got into the school at like 5.05 in the morning with a can of black spray paint. And I sprayed every single lock so you couldn't read the numbers on it. No one, no one could get into their lockers, a.k.a. no one could get their books, a.k.a. they couldn't teach class. And they literally said they sent everyone home. Oh my God. And to this day, no one knows I did it. So thank you. <laughs>
And, and to this day, no one knows I did it. They literally, they had to, uh, it wasn't that expensive because like in reality, just had to remove all the spray paint um, to, to clean off all the lockers. But like, that was it. Like they literally, they couldn't host class. Holy and, shit. And like, to me, it was like the greatest thing ever because I did everyone in that school a favor. And like, they, di they didn't even add it to the end of the year or anything. They just straight up just called it. It wasn't like a snow day where you add it at the end of the year. Like just straight up, like everyone got a paid vacation staff wise. Like I... If you think about it, I did everyone a favor. You know what I mean? You're a bad kid. <laughs> did you tell any of your friends? No. No? No. You kept it to yourself. Yeah. Literally. For 15 years. Yeah. No one knows. Okay. And then, so, and then senior year, I did one worse. Um, <laughs> okay. Senior year, I did one worse. There's only one guy that knows uh, I did it because he was my friend and he got caught in the crossfire. Uh, so, <laughs> it's very, it's, there's a theme you're going to catch here. Um, very similar cafeteria in the mornings where everyone sits there's nowhere else to hang it's connecticut it's cold everyone goes to the cafeteria everyone has like brown identical tables with these like plastic blue seats and i was able to match the color blue and i bought a gallon of blue paint and i went in there and i dabbed blue paint and all the seats so when everyone went in in the morning to sit down everyone just sits there and then when they all got up for first period everyone looked like they just squished a bunch of smurfs with their <laughs> cheeks I ruined like a, at least a hundred pairs of pants. Oh my god! And I, got, and I got one of my friends. I got one of my friends in the crossfire, and I told him like after I graduated, and was like, "By wow. the way, I owe you a pair of jeans." He's like, "Why?" And I'm like, "You remember?" He was like, F <laughs> "Wow." Yeah, dude. Man, I feel I feel like I was left out because I was homeschooled. I literally I've never been to a public school or anything, so I never got to do that. Jeez. Like I did school every day in my kitchen. Like what? prank am I gonna do? My mom walks in. She's like, Corey, where's the dishwasher? <laughs> I don't know who did it, mom. I don't know. That's Where, weird. You could you that's like you couldn't play hooky. No, I was just in my fing room. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could yeah, if I played hooky, they just knock on my door and be like, get in the kitchen, Corey. What would wait, what would happen if you were late to school? <laughs> like, like what would happen? I, they would just yell at me. Oh, you're grounded. That's what it would be. Oh, so you just had to do more school? Yeah. Just basically? Yeah, seriously. No, every day it would be like, you know, wake up at a certain time. And like, if it was five minutes past, they're like, dude, you have 30 seconds to get in the kitchen or you're doing extra homework. I'm like, I'm already f***ing home, mom. How am I doing homework at home, mom? Wait, so you would get, you would do, you would do schoolwork in the kitchen and uh -huh. then you do homework in your bedroom? Yes. So no, <laughs> I'll do homework in the kitchen as well. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to being homeschooled. <laughs> Wait, was anyone homeschooled in here? Raise your hand. There we go. Did you do school in the kitchen? Yes! <laughs> Did you ever do any pranks in the kitchen? No. If you could have pulled any prank homeschooled, what would it have been? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Steal the microwave or something? <laughs> what would I do? Put my bed in the den? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think if you would have pulled enough pranks as you were homeschooled, they would have put you in public school? Like, if you would have done enough, your mom would have been like, I can deal with him. <laughs> what are the public system? Yeah, there's actually a... Ch Wait, you want to know something funny? Yeah, I do. So, the elementary school, like, growing up was literally 15 houses from my house. And all of my friends in that neighborhood went to that elementary school. So me and my older sister, she's older than, she's like 18 months older than me. Every time that they would have recess, there was a little hole under a fence in like this random person's backyard. And we would climb under the hole and we would go play with everybody during recess. Wait, you're the only kid to play hooky to get into school. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I swear to God. And then like a lady would always come out with like a megaphone. She's like, rah, 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 rah. and we just knew to just go, go back <laughs> under the hole, go home and then do school. That sounds like the beginning of like the origin story of a serial killer. I just wanted you to, <laughs> we had to crawl under a fence to make friends. <laughs> Like, that sounds really weird, dude. It was fun, okay? We just wanted to have friends, okay? Were you just always dirty? Just like, just mud covering your face? Like, anyone want to play kickball? Wait, you know what's weird, though? My mom, like, didn't even know that we did that until we were, like, high school. Like, we would be like, did you know that me and Courtney used to climb under the fence and go play with the kids? And she's like, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> she's like, how? And we're just like, yeah, there was a hole. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, out of curiosity, has anyone pulled off a prank in like high school level? Your hand went up real fast. All right, speak, speak super loudly. I'm very curious. Okay, your senior prank was to egg the principal's car, yes. They called half of the Mary Iowa police to come and quarter. Half of the police force for high school with eggs. Kind of rolled around with the troubled kids. Uh, let's let's paraphrase. You can't call them trouble when you're just holes. They're, you know what I mean? Like let's, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Wait. So yeah. the teachers that would call you holes were the fun teachers. What would the non-fun teachers call you? <laughs> <laughs> you imagine is, Sa is Samantha here uh, is Rebecca resting face here uh, Amanda eats asshole here like, <laughs> those are the fun teachers so on emergency contact for my school my dad his name is Corey by the way oh, great name okay wait let's go back to the prank <laughs> <laughs> Word got around to the principal. Principal started calling people that they assume to start the prank in his office. Mmm. The dean is very scary. Explain to me. Saw her tackle a student oh. in the hall. <laughs> like, wait, hold on. With like prop. Wait, wait, wait. Like what? Like, are we talking like, like straight up just? <laughs> <laughs> Elton, her name is Mrs. Parker. You're Mrs. Parker. Okay, I'm Mrs. Parker. You're an asshole. Sorry. Oh, and I take jokes too far. I take jokes too far. I just heard a snort. She tackled the student because the kid was running the class because he was late. What? Wait, wait, wait. She tackled the student because he was running to class? Okay, one, is your dean, like, in the NFL? Like, where? <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe she has PTSD. Like, was he carrying a ball? <laughs> Did she get sued? Or is this, a, is this just, like, in Iowa? Teachers are like, f*** it. Like, let's just... <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Wait, really? It's a Midwest, it's a Midwest thing. If, you're, if your students... <laughs> Yo, I'm just imagining, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> this is all I'm imagining is being like, all right, Timmy, you got a D in your math class. And then she just puts you in a arm bar. <laughs> it's just like, tap. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Back to the prank. Now you're doing it. <laughs> The dean pulled a whole bunch of us in the classroom. And tackled and just you tackled all. tackled everybody. <laughs> just dominoed you. Boom. I was thinking to myself, I'm like, if you call my dad, my dad is a very muscular guy. Wait, hold on. Would you just threaten the dean that your dad's going to beat, beat him? <laughs> my dad will beat you up. My dad will beat you up. <laughs> my dad is a very scary man. He's very muscular. And I was just like, oh, shit. Like... Do me a favor, just a little bit more detail. Your dad's really muscular. What else about him? What, else, what other features do you like about him? Does he have like a strong jawline? Yeah. Do you like Do you like your dad's eyes? Does he have like, a beard or like long yeah, hair? Yeah, does he have like, like nice like eyelashes or anything? What's his like favorite food? Why do you have to look up a... You, you shouldn't... You have to look up a picture of your own father? Just describe him. Just describe him. All my friends are scared of him. And my house, my ex-wife and I just broke up like last week. Did he fight your dad? <laughs> he threatened to fight your dad. I love Iowa. This is great. <laughs> Let's go. He got to the principal, and the principal called a f assembly. Because he was so. He, he, he's a person. <laughs> On graduation day, he came up to me. He goes, oh, I am so proud of you. <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Your principal gave you a compliment, and you're like, you're a. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> What does it matter if he's never met you? He's being nice and you're being, what the? Okay, remember when I went to early and you're like, we're troubled? No, you're an <laughs> <laughs> It's all <laughs> looping around. Say, all my friends who watch you guys, they say that I match Corey's energy. Well, Corey's a sweetheart, so that's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I was known as and also known as Look, I started on your side, but honestly, I get it now. Like, <laughs> okay, did you actually ever egg anyone's car? 
Like, was an egg even ever thrown? We egged, we egged one person. Wait, so the prank never even happened? It was going to, but the principal stopped it. Yo, uh, I'll be honest. Your principal's f good at his job. He had, like, intelligence. Like, he had spies in the senior class. They'd be like, all right, we're going to ruin the f***ing plan. <laughs> you have a splinter cell in your graduating class. Dude, this is like an episode of Jerry f Springer. Yeah. Ever since then, we've had to have cops on campus. Because of an egg? <laughs> That's where my tax money's going to? <laughs> so no eggs, only one car was egged. What car was it? Oh. <coughs> I'm supposed to remember? Yeah, you're the one telling the story. Who else is supposed to remember? Do you know what car it was? No, you have to know. The lady who tackled the student, it was- Wait, so you do remember who it was? Oh, that was, why are you so- <laughs> You are so this is extra. What she does. You expect me to remember? I do, but do you expect me to? <laughs> you you know what I thought the story was going to? Yeah, what was it? What I, I literally thought you were about to be like, look, please don't call my dad. Just tackle me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's where it was going. I literally <sighs> did. Does anyone else have any uh, crazy pranks? And thank you for sharing, by the way. Yeah, thank you. I saw a hand here, and then I saw a hand here. What was What's yours? Me and some friends convinced slash tricked a teacher into taking us to a nude beach while we were on a school oh, trip. Wait, no, no, I'm sorry. So, hold on. No, no. Come up here. Come up here. Please take the seat. Please come up here right now. I'm sorry. No. No. Yeah, no. you tricked him. Here, no, take take this mic. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't know. No, it's you, okay. You think it's a short story. This is going to drag out. Here, take that mic. All right, you're sitting down. Is, by the way, we're going to get into paranormal stuff eventually. Repeat what you just said, please. Um, While on a school trip, what what high school middle school high no i I'm, <laughs> I, I'm i'm just asking it could have high been school. college okay a high, high school. school trip yes we were in anaheim california oh okay and it's familiar it was a really good school thing whatever and we were at santa monica and we were like having a beach day so we were beach hopping mm -hmm. the teacher was driving so they couldn't be on their phone and they're like oh well you put directions into the maps the gps to take us to venice i don't even remember what beach we were going to sure and so we like look at each other and like, cause we kind of wanted to do it, just, you know, whatever. And so we look up nude beaches in California and mm -hmm. we just pick the first one and put that in the GPS. Who is we looked up? Like me. And then it was like another girl and two guys. Huh? How many people were in the class? Well, it wasn't like a class. It was like an extracurricular thing, but there was like five people in the car total. Yeah, it seems very extra and, <laughs> and not very hey. curricular at all. <laughs> okay. We wanted to have a good time. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, wow. So we put it in the GPS and we put the little phone up there. And my teacher, she was a whole other story, but she was just driving, going with it. And she pulls up and she's like, ooh, these Californians are really comfortable with themselves. And then she sees the sign for the nude beach and she like grabs her visor and like flicks it up. And we're like, what? And she's like, this is a school vehicle. There's cameras and microphones in here so they can see that I brought you here. <laughs> and so she's like pissed and we're like pissing ourselves laughing is because- that Is that true? Wait, hold on, is that true? Do school vehicles have cameras and audio? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, okay, that must be since I've left. Okay, <laughs> all right. And so she's freaking out and we're dying laughing and we're like, oh, the, it, well, it has a really similar name to this other beach. It must've just been an honest mistake. We had no idea. We were like, why would we, ew, icky. We wouldn't want to go to a nude beach. <laughs> we thought we were at dude beach. <laughs> yeah, we thought, oh my we God. Thought we, were, we, we meant to type in a new beach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we had no idea these were even in California. What? So weird. So we did get them to take us to a nude beach. I'm assuming you're making an American Pie reference. I'm assuming is what we're talking about. All right, cool. Wait, so did you guys actually get out of the car? We opened the doors, but that's all the further we got okay. before she realized. You got to break this down for me. How long ago was this? Maybe like 2017, 2018, maybe. Okay. Wow. Here's a weird thing. I'm not trying to put you in the spot here. Oh, God. There's no nude beaches anywhere what you're talking about. So that really? means you drove to like a cult. <laughs> like you, you had to have driven to like well, a nudist camp. There's no nude beaches. I want to say it was like called pirate something or it started with a, I, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's not a public beach. I think you, yeah, I'm telling you, I, I know for a fact, everything from Tijuana to all the way San Francisco, maybe even the Oregon border, no nude beaches. 
So I have a feeling you're trying to play, oh, we found our nude beach. I think you did some homework. <laughs> I, think, I think you looked okay. up like top 10 nude beaches and you know. We did look it up while we were at Santa Monica because we want- we oh, So were, you planned this out. Okay. Okay, you started we with like, we thought it'd be it. funny. We just like yes. hastily did yes. it. No, we you like, planned this out. Okay, yes and no. We were Let like, how you. funny would it be if we like went to a new beach? So we looked him up and we were like Super looking. funny. That's what everyone thinks is hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> and we were planning to do it that day. But then when the opportunity presented itself, when she the gave us the GPS. Arose. Sorry, exactly. carry on. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> She gave us the GPS and we look at each other and we're like, which one did we decide? Like, which one were we gonna like? Because we were looking at like the mm. top ten list or whatever. Oh, so you were kind of. We were planning it. it but notice we how the story has changed since she began. It went from oh, we just typed in nude beach to we planned this out for ten weeks and researched top nudie beaches. Let me ask you this: Did you like this teacher? I'm starting to think you did this on purpose to get her fired. Oh, the hell! Oh! Oh! Go. Oh, I'm on the money. I'm Detective on the money. Detective Elton. I'm on the money right now. Look, I got away with my pranks for 15 years. I can figure out when someone planned one out themselves. You caught me. Oh! <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> Holy <laughs> <shit. Yes>! <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay, here's the thing. You, you're a small group and you chose to go to California with this teacher whom you did not like. Yes, because schools give you an option of which teacher you want to go on a trip with. Oh, so you chose this no, teacher. No, I was being sarcastic. They do not say like, oh, what teacher do you want to go to California with? Oh, no, okay. Okay. we don't get to choose that. Okay. Also, most people don't go on trips to Santa Monica okay. for extracurricular. So I don't It was know. like a business well, program. I can't so we like, trust you anymore. There. So I'm questioning everything oh, you Oh, and say. you're the most trustworthy person talking about all your pranks. Are we going to get pranked tonight? Huh? Are we gonna get pranked tonight? Would I tell you if you were going to? Seems like a dumb question. Sounds trustworthy to me, right? <laughs> Dude, do you, should I just quit the podcast? <laughs> should this be y'all show? <laughs> okay, this teacher, again, why did you not like this teacher? Because you, like, you potentially not only got them fired, but put on a watch list and made them lose their career. She didn't get fired. She closed the visor quick enough. Everything was fine. Okay, good, good. Okay, but why did you not like this teacher? That's it's a very extreme length to go to. Was she a <laughs> Yeah, let's go with that. She was a No, let's not no, go with that. She, let's go with the there truth. There wasn't a specific reason, and we didn't not like her. She was just a little crazy sometimes. Mm. Dude, this could be a whole podcast just about this teacher. But Continue. I mean, she does still work there, and this is on the internet, so I don't... We can blur your face or something. <laughs> That's not necessary. We're not going to blur her face. Yeah. <laughs> How does that yeah, you can say the teacher's name. We'll blur your face. Okay, yeah. Out. Here's the full name. <laughs> so Mrs. Applebottom. That's it. Just she just she was crazy. She was just stressed and raising a family and working for a job. And you were like, let's get her fired. Honestly, yeah. She's, Honestly, yeah. yeah. No, no, not the last part. Not the last part. <laughs> There's no. something with these Kylies and assholes that are linking up. <laughs> what can I say? Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh my god. She was just a little psychotic. Okay. And neurotic and deaf and scary. And deaf? Yeah, she was deaf. And so she would scream at you. And then when you scream back, she'd get mad and say you had an attitude. But it's like, girl, I literally like, I'm talking to you, but you can't hear me. Mm. Cause she's deaf. Yeah, but she <laughs> That'd be like you signing to someone and be like, why aren't you speaking to me? I just wanted to tell the nude beach story. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> Well, I really enjoyed this. I thought yeah, this that was, was a lot that of was fun. a great story. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. You oh, want this back? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! All right, do you still want to say your story? Cause you do. We threw a kid into the ceiling. <laughs> Come on up. Over here. There's the picture. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Get into the ceiling! <laughs> Holy! <laughs> I was a freshman. You were a freshman, a f***ing strong one. You were the strongest. Can I see the picture, please, one more time? Yes. Can I pretty please see that? Oh my god! Wait, it made, did it make the news? Yes, we made the news, and it costed eight thousand dollars in repair. <laughs> So wait, we, uh, it says students find find for damaging ceiling while filming social media video. 
<laughs> New at 5 o'clock, KCCI 8 News. <laughs> okay, explain this to me. What were you, were you doing, like, light as a feather, stiff as a board? <laughs> so, <laughs> like, at my school, there's over 800 kids in one building, and we're all freshmen. Because there's 800 freshmen in your school? Yes. And um, so there wasn't enough room for all of us so in there. So you put one in the field? <laughs> There's too many of you here! <laughs> oh my god! Yo, these cornbread kids are f***ing <laughs> strong! <laughs> so, pretty much we were like, so what would happen if we just threw them up in the air as hard as we could? And we... <laughs> We'd been trying to rip apart the school this whole year. That whole so year. So you did it with someone's face? <laughs> he was like, so what if you guys throw me during passing period up in the air? And we did. And I love that. Wait, during passing period? Yes. And you literally f passed him to God? <laughs> <laughs> what was the plan, though? Like, there is no plan. Like, like what was going to happen once he went through the ceiling? <laughs> Go to class. Like, would that just be like a new hall? Yeah. You know? Hey, yo, I wish this chalkboard was blank so I could draw out like the <laughs> physics of it. I'm like, okay, if you take 10 students and you multiply their force by 20, what happens to Steven when you launch him to <laughs> Jesus? Oh my God. <laughs> Keep Our school is just a mess. It's Valley Southwoods. I wonder why. So. Oh. Boo. Okay, this is apparently a known school. Okay. Um, We have a crazy principal and a crazy vice principal. <laughs> Do they know each other? <laughs> is there like just a meeting like of the board of education in Iowa is like, all right, what can we do to f scare these kids today? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> she wears these super tall heels, our vice principal, and then she'll walk around the halls and then she'll yell at us as loud Your as Your vice principal is in stilettos? Yeah. <laughs> and her face is orange. Okay. Okay. With the, her extensions that she got yanked out by a student. <laughs> Did they go to jail? No. They came back like two days later. Has uh, your vice principal ever tackled or put someone in a in a rear naked choke? No, but we did have a girl knock out our principal in eighth grade <laughs> at a football game. Our vice principal. A dude who's probably six foot two and weighs around like 180. Knocked out your principal? Yep. What was your principal doing? Eventually we will talk about ghosts, but... <laughs> She, he was just, I think he was trying to get her to leave. Wait, wait, wait. He knocked out a girl? She knocked out him. Oh! Oh, wait. The principal was six foot two? The vice principal, yeah. The vice principal was six foot two, and she got knocked out by a female student? He got knocked out. The principal's a dude and got knocked out by a female student. Wait, huh? The student? The student is a female and the principal is male. But why did the vice principal just get brought up? Because he is the vice principal. He's not the principal. Oh, okay. okay, okay I understand okay. now. Okay. The vice principal's male. The student's female. And she was in eighth grade. How did how did she knock him out? Wait, I thought you said your vice principal walks around in stilettos. I'm talking about a different. Oh, okay. I thought, I was like, wow, you had a really progressive vice principal. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, cool. All right, two different schools. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Understood. So, How did they knock him out? Like one punch, I think, to the face. He was out. He went to the hospital. It was like the second time that it's happened to him because he transferred. <laughs> he transferred down from our main high school. Yeah, get to, to get away from the strong grader. students. Yeah. And then he still to got an eighth grade. To a middle school. And got knocked out Yo, again. Yo, please tell me you went to elementary school and they got knocked out again. <laughs> <laughs> Holy sh**. Okay. Again, you guys just all threw him through the ceiling. Yeah, pretty much. Did the video go viral? Yes. Okay. And Whose video was it? Um, and who had to pay the $8,000? They all, they kind of just split it between the kids, but it would, they only had to pay like $80 each. Okay. So there was a hundred of you? No, there was only like seven guys. Wait, so someone saved a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah. On the eight thousand dollar bill. I don't know how it happened. They were just like, "Hey, look, kids, we don't want to get punched by you, so <laughs> <laughs> just give us your lunch money and we'll call it a day." Because <laughs> I talked to uh, one kid about it, and he was like, "It was only eighty dollars that they made us pay." Wow. Okay. Okay. So I feel like it was worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, dude, look, it's abandoned already. <laughs> Let's just launch someone at the end of the show. <laughs> Y'all down to chip in eighty? <laughs> We all throw in 80 bucks and just watch them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for That's sharing Iowa your story. That's Iowa for you. That's Iowa for you. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Wow.
<laughs> what were we going to go into after that? No clue now. <laughs> Dude, that's insane. Oh, we were going to do like the Paranormal 101. Is actually what we were going to do. Yeah. Oh, I have a funny story. Do you? Yeah. I'll be honest. If it was up to me, I'd be like, I know there's more pranks in this fucking room. I can feel it. I can feel it. I almost want to do the whole night just to put these pranks in. <laughs> we shun it. All right. What's your, what's your funny story? So I was homeschooled, you know, like I said, but uh, my parents, they own a dance studio. So I'd be there every single day and every day around... 2 p.m. to 3.30, me and like my homies, we would always skateboard outside before class and stuff like that. And there's a restaurant connected to the studio. And there is this guy that worked at the restaurant. And for some reason, I was like 10 or 11 years old. He comes walking out one day and me and my friends that were skateboarding, we all just go, hey, David. And he just looks at us and he just continues walking. Fast forward six years. We still have called him David every single day, <laughs> even though his name is not David, okay? Like, there's, there's been dozens of times where he's like, my name's not David. And we're like, stop, David. <laughs> okay, swear to God. Dude, so, you should have written a letter to his mom and be like, hey, do me a favor. <laughs> the next time you see him, just call him David. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so I'm 17 now, okay? Literally, so if I was 11 when this started, six years go by, I'm 17. I see him walking outside and I'm like, hey, David, what's up? And he just stops and he just <laughs> looks at me and he shakes his head and he goes storming to the dance studio. And I'm like, oh no, he's gonna go tell on me. He's and gonna go break dance. <laughs> So he goes running up the stairs and I'm like, this is hilarious because one, I'm 17. I'm not going to get in trouble because I've been calling this dude David for six years and I go up there and he's literally like yelling to my mom and is like, for five years, this kid has been calling me David. He's been harassing me. If he keeps doing it, I'm calling the cops, blah, blah, blah. And my mom is just sitting there like listening. And then finally he's done and he walks down the stairs and my mom just looks at me and just bursts out laughing in tears. And that I was it. Your, I wish your mom was just like, shut up, David. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> so oh. The cops come up and like, okay, we heard that David has a report. <laughs> <laughs> He's complaining that people are calling him by his name. <laughs> Did you still know, like, I know it's eight years since that mm -hmm. happened. Do you still know where he lives? Like, is he still there? That restaurant is still open. So there's okay. a chance he still works there. Is it a big town or a small town? Very small. Huh. I can easily find out who he is. No, what I'm saying is, could we go and get like the whole city council? <laughs> like get a whole new ID made. He comes home. His wife calls him a different name. His kids call him a different name. And one day he's just David. Like everyone in the entire town is like, hi, David. Good morning, David. They, he goes to Starbucks and he's like, my name's Steve. And they write David. Like just, I mean, obliterate him at every level. And he's just like, am I David, we might make him go insane, dude, and then he'll become a vice principal. <laughs> Holy, <laughs> shit. yeah, I miss David. <laughs> God, you, you guys don't understand how mad he would get. It was so funny. I'm, I'm genuinely debating. Okay, we're definitely gonna read the stories. That's without any doubt. We yeah. were gonna possibly do a QA, but I really want to hear more stories. Uh, <laughs> Should we ask what they would rather would do? You, would you guys either prefer us to spend more time in the paranormal topic, or do you want us to just keep finding oddball stories in here that we can exploit? <laughs> the prank stories? So let me do this. I will share one more prank that I just realized I did, and no one ever knows it was me. Oh, I have another one. Uh, this one is, uh, let's call it R-rated. Um, Wait, when did? how long ago was this one? It done? does not involve a nude beach or any teachers. Uh <laughs> Okay. But this was also in high school. Okay. So this is this, uh, okay. <laughs> Are you sure you want to talk about it? I'm gonna I'm gonna alter the name of the website that I uh, that is in, in, involved in this story. <clears throat> okay, you could go into Apple stores, right? In an Apple store, what? Oh, do you know? Have I told you? No, you haven't. But I'm just imagining. Okay. <laughs> So this is 2007, right? It was junior year high school. Yeah, 2007. And you could go into uh, Apple stores and you could go on the internet, right? And you could also change home pages. But 
What I knew was I had a friend that worked at Apple and there was actually like an IP address you could type into and it would change the settings for the entire store. And everyone goes into Apple stores at that time to use the free internet and to just like kind of search up whatever they wanted, right? That was like pretty common. So I went in to the Apple store just outside of Central Park in New York City. I used to take the train in like every weekend to just go run around and go to shows. This is a massive Apple store. I'm talking like eight huge, like 120 inch TVs, hundreds of monitors, hundreds of computers. And I went in and I went into the main system and I changed it. So automatically, if you opened up Safari, the homepage went to was a porn site. <laughs> but it was like a very graphic porn site. It was like when you're in high school and you're like, oh, this is so funny. But as an adult, you're like, I was a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> it was like that caliber, that caliber of a website. And I, and the Apple store is like too, la like too layered, right? So there's like, you go down a staircase to get down into the actual area where the monitors were. And I just went up to the top of the staircase and I just watched. I just watched each person one by one go on a computer and just go. <laughs> <laughs> but there were some computers, there were some computers that were tapped into the giant monitors. And I, re and I remember this, I remember this so clearly. Some old lady went in and was like trying to check her email. I don't know what she was doing. It didn't matter. She clicked open Safari and on a 120 inch high definition 4K TV with hundreds of people in there, this massive porn site pops up on the wall and I see the staff just go. <laughs> Dude, like I'm talking like, have you seen, like in Lion King when that stampede runs through? Like all the staff, they, they're just trying to unplug the monitor. They're like pushing the lady out of the way. Dude, and here's the thing. This was happening at the same time all these other people. So now you have like it over here and it's like pop, pop, porn site, porn site, porn site, porn site, porn site, porn site. Dude, it was chaos. And I literally just stood up there like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and again, no one got hurt, uh, you know, but it was, it was fun. And I would go into Apple stores and I would pull up my Vine compilation. <laughs> I thought that was bad. No, dude. Oh my God. It was so funny. One day I'll say what the site is, but it's, it no longer exists. I've checked. <laughs> just for, just for nostalgia. You know what I mean? I would just. I heard nostalgia, yeah. I just wonder if anyone was at the IP department of the website like, wow, New York City got really frisky lately. <laughs> <laughs> Times Square is into some weird <laughs> Dude, that is hilarious. <laughs> Oh my God, that uh, is By hilarious. the way, I was by myself when I did that. I just like, I don't know, it sounds fun. You were fun. by yourself? Yeah. I think my friends went to go into FAO Schwartz to like the toy store around the corner. And I was like, I'm just going to go do this. <laughs> wow. Okay, does anyone have a prank that could top that? Oh, oh, your hand went up quickly. All right, just give me, give me the log line. So uh, me and three buddies uh, decided to put three live sponges in our principal's car. <laughs> Come on up. Oh my Look, God. I just got to let you know, now you have to beat nudity, $8,000 in damages, and fistfights and tackling. All right. So three live skunks in your principal's car. Yeah. Okay. First off, one, describe your principal to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember. Also, is your name Kylie? No. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's Kyle. <laughs> my last name's E. <laughs> So, what is your name, by the way? Uh, Mikkel. Uh, so <laughs> I don't remember our principal's name, but she looked an awfully a lot of like Professor Mer uh, Professor McGonagall from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she was a soul. You sure? Yeah. We've heard that before, and it turned out <laughs> you might be the problem. <laughs> why was she? Why was she a complete? So me and a couple buddies decided to play some music in the library really loud. And okay, she again, gave, <laughs> starting to sound like you. <laughs> but uh, but she gave us like five weeks of in-school detention for inciting a riot. Wait, hon, what is in-school detention is just school. Yeah. So you just had to go to school? You had to sit there in the office and do nothing all day. Oh, instead of going to class, yeah, you would just sit in a room and yeah, not by yourself. learn. Just so her punishment was to make you dumber. Yeah, that basically. <laughs> you know what we do with these kids doing stupid things? Make them stupider. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, uh, me and a couple of buddies decided to, for like five weeks, just capture skunks <laughs> and wait for the hottest day. You went skunk hunting. <laughs> yes. So you learned something, I guess. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yeah, we uh, captured three live skunks and uh, how uh, live bait traps. Like what? I'm not. I'm not from here, dude. Like, it's, I don't, it's, it's, I've never. I've never caught a wild it's a animal. Lot of here, but <laughs> <laughs> a lot of yeesh. Like, what was the bait? Was it like peanut um, butter and jelly yeah, you sandwiches? Said, you said li live bait. Yeah, it was dead fish that we caught. Well, that's not from live. The river. Okay. okay. Well, it's a live trap, so they go in there, eat the fish, and the door closes behind them. Okay. 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 Got it. It was like the like fourth or fifth day into senior year and she already gave us five weeks of in-school detention mm -hmm. and it was like 103 out and she had all of her windows open and she had like a 93 Corolla with a crank window <laughs> <laughs> so we let all three skunks loose in her vehicle and rolled up the windows except Hold for on, wait, crack. Wait. Okay, uh, you, you just murdered three skunks. <laughs> You're not supposed to leave babies in cars or dogs. <laughs> You're throwing three wild animals in a car? And then rolled the windows up. <laughs> See, that's, that's the best sure. part. We didn't have to worry about them overheating. It's because she always brought her dog to school and she had like little tiny bulls in the back seat. Oh, okay. Yo, dude, you can still overheat even if there's water. Still. <laughs> Wait, did the skunks end up dying? No. Oh, okay, continue. Then. No. Uh, <laughs> we'll allow it. She, so it took like about five and a half hours to get animal control out to the parking lot. <laughs> Just Why didn't you volunteer? Be like, we know how to catch these. Uh, Dude, that was in the master plan. She'd be like, someone put three skunks in your car. I'd be like, oh, teach, uh, I can help you. I know how to catch skunks. And you would have been the hero. And she never would have known. Well, no, it's because she rounded up all of us kids in her office. What is it with this golden corral shit? happening <laughs> they, they lassoed me and timmy and brought us into the office so there's like about 11 of us oh, okay. and she went through and asked us one by one which one it was and none of us told her no sh so all of us ended up getting in school suspension for it and what'd you learn to catch this time <laughs> we caught a couple grizzlies so uh <laughs> so we ended up catching more fish and actually unscrewing the uh air vents and sticking them in there <laughs> I'm so sorry, mom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about ghosts anymore. It's amazing. And it almost <laughs> shut down the school for about three weeks. Wait, oh. it, hold on. It almost shut down the school for about three weeks? Almost. It, As was, in it did shut down the school, but just not for a full three weeks? Yeah, for no, almost for a full three weeks. Wait, so two weeks like, was shut down? Yeah, two weeks. So two and a half weeks it was shut down. Yeah. But not three. Yeah, not and three. Did you okay. have to? did you have to <laughs> add those two and a half weeks at the end of your school year? No. Nice. <laughs> nice. Okay, but did you have to pay any damages? Uh, yeah, we ended up having to pay like Two hundred dollars worth of damages. That's worth it, dude. I'll give you eight hundred right now to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm like, a, wow. I'm like a high school prank hitman. Wow. <laughs> and that's it, just a couple hundred bucks and yeah, a couple hundred bucks, and then we were free to go. But she did make us serve a little bit of community <laughs> service afterwards. Like what? What'd you have to do? Uh, <laughs> Clean so it up, roadkill. If anybody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it was actually cleaning up uh, garbage three miles outside of town, walking from the highway all the way back into town towards the school. I was waiting for you to tell me you had to pick up all this garbage and then you just put it back in her car. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, I'm still in in-school suspension right now. We actually just dumped it right on the front doors of the school. <laughs> love you guys. I, mean, I feel at home here. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't realize we were interviewing a f hero. <laughs> wow. Oh what year you said, what year was this for you? Uh, 2019. What, what year of high school? Oh, senior. Oh my God. So three years ago. Oh my God. Wait, can you get in trouble for talking about this? Oh, hell no. All right, cool. Wait, hold on. So you didn't have charges pressed against you or anything? Uh, no. Dude, my, my school and all the senior pranks, that's why I never told anyone I did it. They all had charges pressed against them. Jesus. Like the, the police department, like one, like literally the, the chief of the police had one, one of his, his sons was in the high school and he pressed charges against like every prank that was ever done in my high school. Wow. Like you literally got served and like a lot of people had like pretty f records. Like I'm really surprised that we didn't get charged because somebody actually did get arrested in the school for showing airsoft guns on their Snapchat story and 
somebody said, oh, yeah, he's going to bring him to school. And she- What? Yeah. For showing an airsoft gun in a Snapchat story. Yeah. They arrested him for possibly maybe thinking he was going to bring that to school. Yeah. Was it clearly an airsoft gun? Yeah, it had the orange tip and everything. I don't know enough about modern school rules and all that. So that, <laughs> we that, used to, that could be a very warranted thing. I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, I'm probably like five or six years older than you. And like, dude, growing up, like the whole neighborhood, we would run around all the houses and just shoot airsoft guns at each other. Exactly. And like that's, people would literally have BB guns and they're just pumping them and we're just shooting. That's each other exactly with what it. we would do. But of course, somebody had to go and spoil the fun of, you know, oh, yeah, somebody in the neighborhood got a new airsoft gun. Was it a girl that tattled? I have no what clue. The what is that? <laughs> what the f- I was just asking. <laughs> well, dude, what is, yeah, what is that supposed to mean? I was going to ask if her name was Karen. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, wait. I, I, I want to ask this question because I, as far as I know, I'm the only person that's ever done this that I've ever met. Th- has anyone here ever had a newspaper war? Yes. A newspaper war. Do you know yeah. what I'm talking about? Yeah. What's a newspaper war to you? So we used to go around with a one-gallon bucket and a shit ton of newspaper crumple it up in the balls, dip it, dip it inside the water, and just start hurling them at people inside classrooms. Oh, you're, 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 you're way more violent than what I was talking about. <laughs> we got taught by the previous senior class uh, about that, and it was hell. <laughs> it's very different than what mine was. What I was, was yours? <laughs> mine was, we. I don't know why, but in middle school, we would just steal all the newspapers for the entire neighborhood because we knew you could throw them. They were like very aerodynamic, and if you threw them hard enough, you could hit someone in the throat, and they'd be, yeah! <laughs> And then there was also construction sites, and we would steal all the from the construction sites and build like newspaper like like basically fortresses yeah. and we would like build bases all throughout the neighborhood wait for like other kids to come home from school and just <laughs> drill them with news- <laughs> we were like little newspaper assassins we'd be like <laughs> <laughs> that's why we used to make paper wasps that's why you'd make what paper wasp what is a paper yeah, wasp it's a little corner of a construction paper it's that you kind of make into a cone and then you put a thumbtack in it and you use a okay um <laughs> Is anyone's anyone here a police officer or uh, I I have to identify a potential suspect. <laughs> Wait, so what, what would you do with these paper wasps? So literally we would get bored in class and make them and shoot them up into the ceiling. Dude, okay. I did something kind of similar in school, but again, way more mundane. We used to just lick gummy bears and stick them onto the ceiling. <laughs> See, we weren't allowed to have snacks in class, so we'd end up just like tossing like freshly sharpened pencils into the ceiling and everything, waiting for them to drop down. And everything. you couldn't have snacks, but you could have shivs. Yeah, in basically. class. <laughs> yeah, we weren't allowed to eat snacks, so we would make our own daggers. What yeah, we, in the? F- yeah. <laughs> oh my God! Amazing. Man, I was homeschooled and missed all this. <laughs> wow. I feel like I want to go back through public school. <laughs> Dude, what are, what are pranks going to be in, when I have kids? Oh, my God. I'm afraid. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. Okay, definitely. But we got to go into the stories, right? Yeah. So we welcome have to. to our paranormal show. <laughs> you know what's so wild about you saying that? Precisely an hour since we stepped foot on stage. Wow. That was an hour of just the most wild pranks and yee yee sh- I've ever heard, dude. That was fun, though. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I'll be honest. I feel like we need to do this for the next couple cities we go to to see, like, what area has the most f***ed up kids. <laughs> I just want... Because we're going, we're going to Denver next, and they're uh-huh. going to be like, oh, yeah, I just loosened my buddy's bindings on a snowboard. <laughs> and be like, yeah. be like, yeah, there's a kid in Iowa throwing f***ing shivs at teacher's eyeballs. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> Okay, the reason we decided, this was not the reason we decided to do this as a tour and a live show, right? Obviously, we run the Overnight Channel, Paranormal Channel, and the reason we wanted to do this as a live show in haunted locations and do this like person to person as opposed to reading stories that were submitted from home is because after we read the story, we can bring the person on stage. And from there, we can learn more about them and figure out if they're lying to us and if they actually were trying to terminate their teacher's job. So... (laughs) Now, now we can learn a little bit more about them, hear more about the story, get to understand things at a deeper level. And at the same time, you all can realize that the story we're reading isn't just a random 
you know, message on the internet. It's an actual person in your community, relatively in your community. And the goal is with enough people sharing their stories, more people will feel comfortable sharing theirs. We want to make talking about the paranormal and the unknown a little less taboo. So that is the actual reason we did this as a live show, because that'd be impossible to do from home through a Zoom call or anything like that. Uh, do you want to go super serious off the bat or do you want to keep it a little fun? Is this a serious mm, story? This story is pretty serious. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. You guys ready for the first story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a car horn. <laughs> are there are there any Iowa rappers that just ad lib? Yeet, yeet. <laughs> yeet. Yeet. <laughs> the rapper Yeet's from Iowa. No. Okay. Uh, so they actually they've written down a they've written down a couple stories and I'm going to read two of them and then bring them on stage and we can talk more about these. So it starts like this. <laughs> this is serious. <laughs> no, y'all are about to feel real bad when I say this yeah, first sentence. I'll be honest when you when you did that it starts like this. I thought you were going to go into some weird country twang right there. <laughs> no, so I was start, born so in Tennessee so I have a little accent sometimes, okay? So it starts like this. Yeah, get ready to feel bad, you know. For real. <laughs> God damn, dude. Ready? Yee yee. <laughs> well, you look how it fing starts. <laughs> no yee yee. <laughs> sad, sad. <laughs> okay. 18 years ago, I lost my baby sister. The day she was born. I was almost six years old. He warned you, you're going to feel like <laughs> <laughs> My younger brother at the time had this little sit and spin toy that he just loved to death. One day, my mom noticed the batteries in the toy had exploded, leaving battery acid on it, and the toy no longer worked to play music. My brother didn't care. He still used it often. I remember one day, the toy went off on its own playing music. My mom was super confused and double checked that there was no batteries and there was none. Well, she told us kids it was our sister talking to us and letting us know she was here with us. Well, a year later, we got a new baby brother and shortly after moved. My mom put the toy in the garage of the new house in a place we could all see it. And growing up, I remember it going off very often and we would just say Danielle is saying hi and that she is here. I never truly believed ghosts were real until the beginning of this year. So as a child, I think I knew it was possible for your family to be with you after they passed, but not in the way I know they can now. This is a memory I will always cherish, even if it wasn't actually my sister talking to us. Story number two. Eight years ago, I lost my grandpa very suddenly, and this man was my best friend. So losing him seemed like the end of me. The night my mom found him was the worst night ever. I was laying in bed, bawling my eyes out, when out of nowhere, I felt a cold breeze on my face. This is the moment I questioned if ghosts were a thing. I was terrified of this breeze because my mind instantly told me that it was my grandpa. And that night after, I calmed down, I closed my eyes, and I swear at the moment I saw him at the end of my bed, waving. When I opened my eyes, nothing was there. Um, Brittany, can Brittany come up here? Oh, come on up, Brittany. You okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for submitting your story, first of all. Oh, wait, let me look at this t-shirt real quick. What's going on here? Oh, overnight dedicated to everything paranormal, extraterrestrial, unknown, unsolved, mysterious, Bigfoot, werewolves, vampires, ghosts, spirits, ghouls, and evil things that live in the night. Oh, my God. It's from Licking County Jail. Huh? Licking County Jail. Licking, is that what I said at Licking County Jail? Yeah. I change it every single time, but I love it. I know. It. I went through the videos and like wrote down, as you said it, what it was so I could pick out my favorite one and <laughs> put it on a shirt. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You even got the font right and everything blacklisted. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that's a cool shirt. Thank you. And, and yeah, seriously, thank you for sharing your story. Okay, so what pranks have you done? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> So I guess what I would like to talk about first is the toy. So the uh, toy actually, the batteries exploded? Yeah, it, the batteries, there was acid covering the 
part that held the batteries. So when you pressed it with batteries in it, it didn't work. And if you put new batteries in, it, it wouldn't work. But there would still be days where the toys would go off by yeah, itself. all the time. Yeah. So I remember when we moved houses, um, my mom put it on the other side of the garage facing towards the door. And I remember a lot like leaving for softball. It would go off just randomly. And obviously my little brother at the time, the youngest one, had no clue what it was because he has no clue who she is. But yeah, it would go off all the time. And we just tell him that it was our sister, Danielle, saying hi and whatnot. So. Do you still have the toy? Um, I think my mom has it out at the storage unit, but I want to get my nephew one. Yeah? Yeah. When was the last time it went off? Has it been like a long, long time? The last time I actually physically remember is probably middle school, so a while so, ago. So that went on for a while. It went on for yeah. about like eight years. Yeah. Okay. And and what what do you think it is? Like, Do you believe it is your little sister who passed away very young and like was still able to show her presence in your home? Or... Like, well, what, what do you think that is, in your opinion, from what you've seen? Uh, I think I'll always believe that it's my little sister, that or it's something creepy following us, but I really that hope it's my something sister. something creepy following us. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I really hope it's my sister. That's kind of how we always said it was my sister. So that's how I'm going to remember it, and that's how I'm going to leave it. <laughs> is that how your mom feels the same? Like My mom actually doesn't believe in ghosts. She, I watch your guys' videos and like that, and my mom is like, oh, this is just a joke. Like, this isn't real. They have a button that they're hitting and all this stuff, and my other brother doesn't believe either. But me, my sis, my two sisters, we all believe in ghosts, so. And how does your mom rationalize a toy without <laughs> batteries? I think to her, it was just a coping thing. Is she could just say that that's what it was. And so it made us feel better. It made her feel better that this toy was randomly going off. Do you believe that she believes? I mean, she might and she might just not be admitting it. You can ask my neighbor. She's on the back. She, My mom does not believe in ghosts. She thinks it's ridiculous when we watch her guys' videos. But yet she'll stand in the living room and watch them with us. So I don't know. <laughs> so she's, you know, curious about it. Yeah, she might be and just not admit it. But yeah, she'll just stand in the living room in the opening just watching. And I'm like, do you want to sit down? She goes, no. I'm just, I'm going, and then she'll still stand there. But does she believe that it was your little sister making the toy go off? She might. I've never actually asked her because my sister's a rough subject. So, yeah, like, I was crying back there when you first read it. Um, My sister's birthday was actually the second, so um, her 18th birthday. Oh, the second of September. Yeah, just Friday. Yeah, so I took my nephew out to her grave and gave her some flowers. and Yeah. Very sweet of you. (laughs) I, I, I could see both sides, like your mom not wanting to believe because if she does and she has to acknowledge that there's a presence there, but you know, it's probably a conflicting subject, right? Because if you want to believe, then it's a great thing because the presence is there, but it's also a reminder that the presence is there. Does she believe at all that items could be haunted? Like, does she like, at what scope of disbelief does she have? Like, is Annabelle like complete, like not a possibility at all? Like, does she discredit everything like that? I don't even think she knows what Annabelle is, to be honest. I don't think she knows what a lot of things are. Like, she doesn't watch haunted movies. Like, I went out and bought the Conjuring movie on Black Friday when I was on sale. I bought, like, I have all of them. My sis- my mom's like, are you serious? Are you actually going to watch these? I'm like, I mean, maybe it was someone else. But, <laughs> but yeah, she, does, she questions my horror movie collection. Uh, yeah, because we have an item in our museum that is a toy that should not ever be able to operate. And it does. Um, so be interested when that video does come out. Maybe you show your mom and go, look, yeah. we're not the only ones. <laughs> yeah. This exists, it, you know, so I'd be curious. You believe, right? Fully and everything? Um, yeah, after watching like a bunch of paranormal videos on YouTube and stuff like that. Like I had a feeling after my grandpa passed away that ghosts are more than likely real, but I had nothing to back it up. And I mean, my sister watched ghost hunters and stuff like that growing up. So I had those, but still had no proof to myself that they are real until like watching you guys and stuff like that and i'm like all right they are real like so i completely believe now would you want to be a ghost if you could be a ghost like when you pass away preferably yeah you'd like to be a ghost yeah i don't want to die <laughs> i don't think a lot of well, people you have to do, die to become a ghost I, I know but then i feel better about it like being able to watch maybe mainly my family all right you die you become a ghost what pranks are you doing <laughs> Depends on who is still alive. If my little sister is still alive, I'm a mess over real good. <laughs> I'm a kidder. Details. I know you have some <laughs> up ideas. So me and my little sister are really close. We're 
10 and a half years apart. Um, we're like inseparable, but there are days where we can fight. Mm. But we all say, we always say, I love you at the end of the day. Like never fails. It's good night. I love you at the end of the night. Um, That's what we do too. But, <laughs> um, but there are some days I just, I, I don't want to admit she's my sister. Um, there's other days I want to slap her. Um, yeah, she's, she's a handful. But she's also what's the 12, prank so. you want to do to her? Um, <laughs> just slap her. Just a go slap. Probably, yeah, just just walk up and. <laughs> we're, I probably do it when she's like sleeping, lights are off, you know, because that's when she's really scared of ghosts. She won't watch any paranormal video on YouTube with lights off or at nighttime. Um, <laughs> she's missing half so, the experience. I, I fall asleep to you guys sometimes, which is weird. All um, right, that, our videos are that boring. God damn. What the <laughs> After work, after a really long night of work and like school and everything, I just pass out. But um, <laughs> he's just opening Dimmick boxes and you're like, <sighs> yeah, one of them was. <laughs> I fell asleep to the war museum and I don't know how. <laughs> yeah, it was. Don't, it was no, funny. no, no one fell asleep during any of my videos. Don't do this to me. Um, Everyone's like me too. <laughs> yeah. I spent a hundred hours editing that series. <laughs> I had a really long day at work and I just fell asleep. So, okay. <laughs> so I work at a hospital. So it's a lot of needy people. So, okay. So um, what's the prank you're doing? Now, now um, we know you're going to do it at night when, when it's spooky out. I kind of want to pull her from her bed. You want to pull her from her bed? <laughs> even, even being alive when like when she's dead asleep, she has to wake up for school in the next morning. I just yank her out of her bed. That'd get her real good. Can you yank her out of the bed and then into the ceiling? <laughs> No, but she has a lifted bed. She's too heavy for me to lift her. Um, but she's okay, a, but you're she's a ghost. A, you have supernatural. You have unlimited strength. I would now. still probably drop her, which would be just as funny. <laughs> <laughs> she has. My dad made them lofted beds, so they're probably like three feet off the ground. Yep. So if you yank her hard enough, she'll just hit the ground real oh, hard. She'd still be like a polite ghost. Yeah, I'm. I'm too nice to hurt anyone in a really bad way. Could I you, am. Wait, could you imagine getting yeeted out of your bed and you're like, what? The is going on then you hear I love you <laughs> like we fight that but would, I love you that I would fight. scare her more that would probably scare her more Dude, you know what I'm thinking about <laughs> you know how you said that you would probably like still drop her imagine if you get picked up by a ghost and you're just floating in the air and then all of a sudden you just start feeling hoo, hoo. <laughs> <laughs> you're slipping out of the hands you're like no 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 Instead of just one drop, it's just that's my nephew's favorite thing is when you act like you're gonna drop him. He loves it. Really? Yeah. Has anyone accidentally played the game too too well? <laughs> my mom. <laughs> Your mom. <laughs> when he was younger, she actually dropped him one time. He, he, he cried for a little bit and then he I was like fine, how you can tell yeah. when someone regrets saying something because they kind of like completely close off their mouth at the end. They're like my mom dropped him one time. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't. Yeah. Have said that. It's not like she's actually gonna watch. Oh! I watch. I watch overnight alone in my room. Why did you just? Oh, that was an insult to both of us. No, I know, but it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna watch our show. <laughs> I thought it was funny. You know, you know what you should do if you would ever haunt your mom. You should just turn on overnight videos. <laughs> She's alone in her room and just overnight video pops up. <gasps> she turns it off, turns back on. Oh. I would do that. I would do that to any one of my siblings. It'd be funny to do it to my brother, though. Yeah. What would, what would you yeah. do to your brother? Is he also afraid of ghosts? You know, I don't really know. He watches the videos with us, but he doesn't really admit anything. So he's on the autistic spectrum. Okay. So his feelings are hard for him to describe to people and show to people. So, I mean, like, if he's interested, he'll usually just kind of stand there and watch. But it's really hard knowing if he's into it or not i mean he doesn't really have much if he starts laughing then he's probably into it <laughs> but to clarify you said that you would as a ghost bully your artistic brother i do that normally <laughs> I'm, no. Iowa. I'm from south dakota you're from oh, south, south dakota, dakota. <laughs> south dakota. Well, i drove I four hours to be here you drove four hours to yeah. be here yeah well you're gonna have four hours driving home being like i shouldn't have said any of that <laughs> Probably not, to be okay. honest. Okay, you got, you got to tell me, because I'm never going to bully an autistic a child. What would you do? <laughs> yep, that was a real question. Um, I don't really know. I mean, you can mess with my brother in so many ways. Um, Just give me one example, and we'll let you leave. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to. Um, <laughs> what you should do, I had to pitch this idea, make it seem like your brother is the one turning on the TVs and yeeting your sister. 
My sister would actually probably believe that it is. Just, him. just possess your younger cold. brother and just give him super sonic strength and just have him yeet every family member around the house. That would actually be really funny. I would enjoy that a lot. <laughs> Make him take the blame. I always blamed my siblings for everything growing up. I, I never took the blame for anything, but I'd always be the snitch that would tell on them. Too, is there one so. thing you, you regret not taking the blame for? And also, we're going to get back to the part where you just said you're a snitch. <laughs> is there one thing you're like, I probably shouldn't have let my sibling get in trouble for that? No, because I usually blamed my brother who's a little bit younger than me. So The same the same brother? No. Oh, different brother. Yeah. Okay. I was going to say that's pretty shitty. <laughs> no. no, I'd always blame my other brother and I enjoyed watching him get in trouble. So, Do you ever make them go do stuff for you? Oh, yeah. Was, oh, okay. yeah, I'll go do this or I'm going to tell on you. No, I usually have to bribe my sister with money or candy or something. But after my knee surgery, she's usually really easy going. You can just be like, well, I can't walk. And she'll just easily go and do it because she knows the feeling too. Um, Did you she, actually get knee surgery? Or was that I've had a, five. Okay. Have you? Yeah. I, you want to see the scars? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, I, you know what I mean? I'm just making sure. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what, yeah. what, what length you're willing to go. Ones, but okay. my sister's at six, I think so. Your sister's at six and you're at five? Yeah, and I've had my just one have knee to be your done. bitches all the time now? <laughs> We're usually, we do it for each other. I, okay. yeah. I usually only use my sister. Because, dude, my older sister would do that to me. Like, it would be like, you know, like our rooms were next to each other and I'd be going to bed and I would just hear doom, 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 doom. And I'm like, oh, s sissy needs something. <laughs> and so I go running in there and I'm like, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's like, get me pretzels. <laughs> And then I would go get her pretzels and then go back to bed. That's such an older sibling thing to do. My room's downstairs, so I call them. You call them? <laughs> or like I'll FaceTime my sister, and especially you, if I want them to shut up because my room is like this. It's it's an unfinished bedroom, so it has tile ceiling and I can hear everything they do upstairs. I'll just call them and tell them to shut up. Can we go back to the part where you said sissy needs something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was her name growing up. Sissy? And I was Buddy. Oh, really? It's, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It okay. Was, it was really cute and sweet. I was f like six years old. Oh, okay. 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 Not when I was like 14. Sissy hungry. <laughs> you know what I just thought about? How crazy would it be if your name actually isn't Corey? Like, what if your name is David? You know what I mean? Like, what if he's been doing that prank to you your whole life? What's your middle name? Steven. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was say, I thought it was David. I think his name was Steven, though. The guy that I would do that to. Oh, man. Good times. Okay. That's good to know. So you would, you, would, uh, you would help us get you know an extra view on a video by haunting your mother by turning on our videos. Mm -hmm. You would yeet your sister out of yep. bed uh, off her three-foot platform bed, and you would bully your autistic brother by giving him super strength. Is that correct? Yeah. All right. Aw. Well, I hope you're, I do hope that your mom watches this video so she can realize that you are so mean to your siblings. <laughs> she knows. She knows. She it's knows. okay. She's like, I don't need to but believe in I'm ghosts. Not, I, I live with a demon. <laughs> growing up, I was the rude child. Very, very rude child. Damn. Yeah. You don't seem like it anymore. Yeah. I pinched my siblings until they bled. <laughs> when I was really mad at them, that's what I do. Rather than doing anything else, I'd just go straight to pinching them until I got older. Then I'd smack them and I left a handprint on my brother's back. I want to mind you, she voluntarily said all of that information. Yeah, but <laughs> like, I my parents even... know it happened, so. I also slapped my brother in the face, the autistic one, mind you. Well, Is wanna... it, oh, wait, hold on. Did this turn into therapy? I'm. <laughs> I really should probably go. So, but... how does that make you feel that you bully autistic children? I mean, okay, at the time, I didn't really know he was autistic. Um, and he's well, maybe he's the reason you are. <laughs> 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 I did, yeah. Our brother told him to touch me in the boobs, and he did, so I slapped him across well, the I face. Well, I want to thank you for sharing your story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was great. The whole living room was laughing. My dad came out questioning why we're all laughing, and I told him I slapped my brother in the face, and he's like, but that's not funny. But I'm like, in the moment, it was funny. It was quite hilarious. Did you yeah. get in trouble? No. Relatable. <laughs> Yo, Dr. Phil ain't going to cut it for this one. We need every doctor in this country here now. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, man. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for sharing yeah. your story. Thanks yeah, for wearing the shirt. <laughs> oh, man. Huh, ghosts. Uh, 
paranormal podcast. The, the great part is uh, when we launched the tour and we still actually haven't decided yet. We still don't know what the name of this podcast or this show is. We've been trying to figure it out the entire tour and it seems to be leaning more and more and more and more towards the name that we thought was not going to be the name. Jerry Springer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Originally, like we're, we're, we're still debating. Originally, the podcast was going to be like the overnight podcast or we were like, uh, we thought it'd be funny to be like paranormal investigators. We we're going to be like the Polter guys. Like we had all these different names. It was going to be like the find your fears podcast. And then one of our friends friends uh, said that you guys should name it like the haunted homies and and it's just like more and more the more and more and more and more it seems like we're haunted homies except not always haunted by ghosts it could be haunted by past pranks that you pulled yeah <laughs> and family members that you have traumatized yeah. that's that's now what haunts you yeah that's cute but it does seem like that's a very fitting name now the more and more we do this tour do y'all think it should be haunted homies yeah. i think i honestly think that's gonna end up being the name yeah. It fits. And that's what our t-shirts say. All the, the skeletons ones say haunted homies. Story number two. And it reads, Elton and Corey. When you say the first experience that made me believe in the paranormal, I didn't realize my experiences were anything but ordinary. As a 17-year-old witnessing her mom in the hospital from a near-death experience, I saw two people standing at her bedside. When I described the outfit of the woman... My mom informed me my grandma was buried in the dress I told her about. It would be impossible for me to know that, considering my grandma died 15 years before I was born. But I realized she wasn't the only person I saw. Around 15, my brother moved out of the family home, and as my best friend, it was difficult coping with him being gone. So I stayed in his old room on occasion. When I woke up in the middle of the night, I noticed a man wearing a red and white striped shirt hanging from the ceiling with a brown rope around his neck. Although I couldn't see his feet as if he didn't have any, he was in front of me, hanging. Shortly after this incident, I was informed our family friend had committed suicide by hanging. I haven't been able to forget about it or wipe the memory from my mind, but the stories continue. When I started working at Xenon Academy, I wasn't aware of the spiritual connections I would have. From describing my coworker, Malaya's dead brother, standing next to her at our front desk, to hearing clear voices calling out my name with witnesses describing the same voices. This isn't a spirit afraid of daytime where there are witnesses. No, this spirit makes himself known wherever you go. From throwing the stall doors open in the bathroom and setting off the faucets that are to be turned on by handle. This man proves to be annoyed by our presence. He will knock things over, send papers flying, talk to us in a clear, ragged tone, and make sure that we are never alone. It is difficult to work there, as I will see figures moving through the salon. They play peekaboo around the stations and pick on our staff and students. Although his story is somewhat unknown, he appears to be angered by our presence. We reached out to you a few months back, hoping you could prove their presence, but it is not needed. As we realize working at Xenon Academy, we do not need paranormal investigation, as everyone in the building has their own experience, and multiple people bear witness to the same encounters. So there's two layers to that. There's the childhood element of seeing past relatives and friends, and I believe a hair salon school academy yeah. being haunted. So, Morgan, would you please join us up on stage? Before we get deep into it, I have to ask, is it pronounced Xenon Academy? Xenon, however you want to pronounce it. We don't really know, but we just say Xenon. Okay. Did anyone else in their head go zoom, zoom, zoom? <laughs> Why would they do that? Xenon, the Disney movie. You don't remember? No, I've never seen anything Make my Disney. heart go boom, boom, my supernova. Okay. <laughs> so, tell me about seeing ghosts. I didn't know it wasn't abnormal and my parents never really asked me too much about it they just kind of listened to it and I mean I even had an experience last night where for the longest time I've been telling my friend that I work with I keep seeing my aunt dying in my dreams and yeah so um, last night my mom texted me while I'm in my room and says hey um, your aunt's not doing good she has COVID and I'm like mm. which one well it's the one I keep having a dream about and it's like I'm not there but I see everybody sitting around her as she's in this hospital bed and I'm hovering her. And 
they say that they were going to put her under for whatever reason. She wasn't uh, like clear about it, but they were going to put her under to like drain the fluid from her lungs, that she's not doing good, that they think she's not going to make it throughout the week. Um, I don't know them too well, but it was like, I've been having the same consistent dream for the past, I would say probably six months about the same aunt, same scenario where it's like I'm hovering over her on the hospital bed as I'm watching her die. And so it was like the same thing with the hanging. So I didn't know. So my brother had just moved out because him and my dad got into a huge fight. And uh, me and my brother grew up together. We were best friends. We did everything together. And it was like when he left, I couldn't bear the idea of staying in my own room. So I stayed in his. And the setup in the room is like the bed's in the far right hand corner and the door's like right here. And I remember I can't sleep with the door open. So I had it shut. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night. It was like 2.30 and the door's open, the hallway lights on down to the stairs. And I go and I look like right back at the TV and then I look over and I just see this guy hanging. And it was like, his face wasn't clear, but it was, he was wearing this red and white shirt. And it was just so vivid because it's like his head was hanging like this. And I just remember the rope and it, I, it wasn't like connected to the ceiling or anything. It was just like right there hovering and he didn't have feet. And it was until my sister had said that um, the guy used to actually come over. He was in a band with my cousin. So he's always over at the house and he was a drummer. So he was there very often. Well, we didn't know, I didn't know too much about him or know him that well at all. It was just, he came over all the time. And the scariest part was um, when I had recently started dating my ex, we recently broke up. When I started dating him, I didn't know his little brother was related to the drummer who used to come over to the house. Mm. And when they did a candlelight visual, I guess they made like something with a popsicle stick with his picture on it. And the picture was of him wearing a red and white striped shirt. Wow. And wow. it was like, from that moment, it just, I didn't know what to think of it, but I never thought too much of it. And then it was like, when um, we had went down to Texas, my family and I would, took a trip down to Texas and my mom has hyperthyroid problems. So like her medication will mess with certain things. So taking that, 24 hour drive or 23 hour drive down to San Antonio, her feet and stuff started to blow up. Like she was just getting really swollen and they admitted her into the hospital. And when they were giving her like her blood pressure medication, they ended up giving her two doses. So they overdosed her and they had no idea. And then they said that there was like a 15, 17 second window where she had died. So we had none, we didn't know any of this. They didn't call to contact us, but I remember going up there to see her and my mom sitting there like just laying and I remember this lady just having her hand over my mom's stomach. And she's like in this really weird pink dress that had like little flowers on it. And like the, I don't even know how to explain it, almost like a lace hung over her hands. And I'm sitting there explaining this to my mom. And she said, your grandma was buried in a dress just like that. Wow. So, wow. yeah. So just real quick, just to go back to your aunt, your aunt's alive right now? Yes. That I really know of so and you and you had that dream again last night no they texted me last night to say she's in the hospital and they oh. don't think she's gonna make it have so, you told anyone in your family about oh the yeah dreams you've yeah been having? that's why my mom texted me and on like i called her and i said i told you i've been having that dream and she's like i know and i called my friend and i'm like you remember when i told you about that story about my aunt and she said yeah and i said she's in the hospital right now they don't even think she's gonna make it is this like something you thought out like did you practice anything like when you were younger did you want these abilities like did you want this to happen like or is this something that just started happening it just started happening like there's no like real explanation to it i never really did too much like paranormal wise never really got into any of that kind of stuff just kind of grew up thinking it was normal and just like seeing people that probably aren't actually there but my parents never saw it as weird, so I never did either. And then when I talked to people about it, it was just kind of like, okay, whatever. But then that's when I started watching your guys' videos because I'm like, it made me not feel unnormal. Like it made me feel like accepted to be able to see that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Have you ever heard if anyone else in your family has these? Like, Not in, that anybody said. Have you tried enhancing your own abilities? Like if you sought out like another um, medium or have you sought out a psychic or anyone who can kind of help you? Like, do you want to enhance these abilities? Uh, okay. So where I work made me want to just a little bit more because I saw my friend's dead brother and I didn't know 
and we were standing up at the desk together and we're just talking and we're listening to music and we were like writing out tickets for the next day at work. And do you know like when you're talking to someone, so say like I was talking to Corey and you like try to peek out around his shoulder to see me, just like that, yep. And I thought my boss had walked past us, both were like at this big desk and I thought she had walked behind us both because I felt it and I was like no big deal, whatever, she does this all the time. And then um, I look over at my friend and I just see that head peek out and I told her and she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, you know, like I just saw something and she's like, just tell me what you saw. And so I explained it to her and I'm like, but it wouldn't make sense because he was light skinned. And she's like, yeah, I, I had brothers who died. Okay. So if you, if you wanted to increase these abilities, where, where like would you go? Like where, what would your first thought process be to like, did you go to Google? Did you go to YouTube? Would you uh, I mean, reach I, out? I don't. It's it's weird to explain because I never thought of it as like an ability. You know what I mean? Sure. But um, and I know the people who get the idea of people who say like, "Oh, it's not real. You can't actually do that. You can't this. You can't whatever." I always wanted to for the simple fact that if your family member is hanging around and I can see them, I would love to tell you that. You know what I mean? Um, and that would be just about it. But. I mean, I've always loved that kind of stuff. The more I watched your videos, the more I got into it, I realized I wasn't really scared of any of it and that I would kind of be willing to do anything to prove that it was real. And I know what I'm seeing is real and I know the dreams and the visions that I'm having are real, but it's like, how do I, in a way, not believe in the paranormal, but then that happens. And, and honestly, like with those intentions that you just stated, mm -hmm. I feel like you would be a great person to try and increase those abilities, you know, like if that is your true motivation and the reason why, then that's a phenomenal reason yeah, to you. like go into it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It really sounds like you were born with a <laughs> gift. <laughs> like the first time that that happened, did you feel like you didn't want to tell anyone because they wouldn't believe you? No. Uh, I remember because it's so real to me. So it's like, say you guys weren't actually here but you guys are. So like you're, I'm physically seeing you and what you're doing in that moment. So it was like, as a kid, I remember there was this lady, we just had a window that went straight down the street. And I just remember a lady who would hang out by this fence. And like, I would say that to my mom and then she'd be like, okay. And it was just that, like, it wasn't who, like, should we go see? Like, what are they doing? It was just like, okay, you see somebody. And that was it. Like, it wasn't really a big deal. How old were you when it started? Uh, the first I remember. So I was probably in fourth grade. Wow. Yeah. And your family seems pretty open to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the recent visions. So like I had one before my uncle died. And now that I'm having it when my aunt's dying, it's kind of like, don't tell us. Mm. We don't want to hear it. You know what I mean? We don't want to know what's getting ready to happen. What does your family believe in ghosts and stuff like that? I think that with me telling them, they accept it. But it's like no one really cares to like go out of their way to watch it or no one goes out of their way to do anything. And I've gotten my mom to watch more of your guys' videos just because I think it's interesting and I would like someone else to experience it with me. But it's no one openly comes out and says it's not real. So I have, a, I have another quick question. Mm -hmm. When you see these people, do they look like a normal person or are they a little see-through? Like what exactly do they look like? They just look normal. Wow. So, I mean, it's so weird to explain because there's times where I can see faces and I can't see faces. So it depends on what they're doing. So um, I can have visions of certain things. So like at my friend's house, I just had, I continue to have a vision of like a rocking chair in my head. And when I had asked about it, it was like her uncle who had died just loved being in this rocking chair or whatever. And it was, it was just that kind of stuff after um, like I would see someone standing in the corner at her house and it was just that. So, I mean... Mm. What I see, like I just see people. Yeah. It's nothing like, that's why I never thought it was abnormal. Yeah. You just looked like a person to be. I just, for, for the first time the other night, I just saw my first like up close apparition. Yeah. And it was, it was a little girl less than a foot away from me, but yeah. she was see-through. And okay. when I first looked at her, I thought right. it was a real person and then she yeah. vanished. Right. But my first thought was, I, I, how do I even what tell do I do? these people? Like yep. they're not going to believe me that exactly. I just saw that. And I think that if I wasn't, if I didn't start saying it as a kid, I probably be able to, or if my parents weren't as like nonchalant about it, I probably wouldn't be able to, mm -hmm. but it's like, so with, um, who I would presume as my grandma, it was like, I didn't see her face or her head. It was just like that body and the man standing behind her. And it's like, I can't identify who you are, mm -hmm. but I can identify things about you that people know. Interesting. 
and how you just talked about a vision a second ago i haven't even told you this this was really weird to me and like it was this has also never happened and like i don't know if it's because we're going to so many different haunted locations right now in a certain amount of time and then also i'm having patty like help train me and open up more and stuff but when we were at penhurst on the second night it was like seven in the morning and we were wrapped up and i'm just outside by myself and i'm talking to the employees and just talking to them about stories and as we're in the middle of talking, super weird, I just got a random vision mm -hmm. of a guy jumping out of a window yeah. of the building next to me. And I was like, why did I just think that in my head? Right. So I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And then five minutes go by and the tour guide that's telling me a story, she goes, oh yeah. And a guy jumped out the building right here. And I'm like, are you me. I was right. like, why did I just picture that 10 minutes ago? Well, see, and it made me wonder, like I have long conversations with my friends about it. It's like, um, when I'm sleeping, am I seeing this happen in another universe? Like, am I alive in another universe and I'm witnessing this happening? Mm. And then when I hear about it and it's like, sometimes I get it completely spot on and the other times I won't, but I won't go to a hospital and watch someone die. Like, it's just, it's not my thing. Yeah. So it would explain. I don't really think that's anyone's thing. Just want to chime in there real quick. Oh, yeah. Quick. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's like everyone everyone oh, would hey, tell me. What are you doing Tuesday night? You want to go down, down to the, to the ICU person? and just yeah. watch a couple, huh? Right. Yeah. No, it's just I don't. I see you. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Continue. I don't want that to be my last vision of somebody. So yeah. I won't go down there and see you. Um, and I know that's horrible because it's like, well, that could be their last time they see you. And it's like, but I don't want to remember you that way. I mm. want to remember other stuff about you. Um, but I never really hung around my aunt too much. She wasn't really involved with the family. So like, to me, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was just like, I saw it. I know it was getting ready to happen. I've had the feeling for like six months. So. I mean, it's, it literally sounds like you have an incredible gift though. Seriously. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And Seriously. if you do go down the route to increase it, we'd love to hear how you progress and what route you choose and how to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, yeah, for sharing absolutely. your story. Thank Round you. of applause, please. We are going to go into the Q&A now um, because for time reasons. So the first question says, do you plan on doing more reaction videos? Ah. That's a good question. I would like to. Yeah. I like, but it, probably not till next year, realistically, you know? Yeah. Maybe like a best of, like best moments or craziest moments kind of reaction Dude, video. Dude, if we did a reaction video of best of investigations during this tour, yeah, that would be insane. Because we've been getting some of our, like, we, we've been getting some of the best evidence we've ever got during this tour, swear to God. Like, the EVPs that we've gotten on this tour are better than any EVPs we've ever gotten. We also now have the best EVP equipment we've ever yeah. had, too. So we that all, Yeah, we lot. do have... Yes. Um, so like, I think like when well now when we go through videos, like I'll run to Corey when I find something really cool or I'll text it in the group chat. So there's a lot of like reaction that's happening just like organically, like as videos are being edited now. So like doing them after videos come out, you, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, I don't know, it, it, in a way it would be like acting for us. And that's not really our thing. It would be more of just explaining the evidence that we've already know about. Yeah. There's no reaction because we've already reacted to it. So I think yeah. that's part of it. I don't like, I don't like forcing pieces of content that aren't yeah. Organic. Like if I could just post our group chat where of us just, you know, reacting to things that way, then that would make yeah. sense. But I think it's fun every once in a while to, you know, get a video, get the whole squad back together in the room and we get to watch and kind of relive those memories again. Kind yeah. Of joke about it. I like doing that. Um, this question is what happens slash what do you do after the investigations on tour? Uh, <laughs> Corey does prayers and the chance uh, for, <laughs> for ghosts to suck his balls and... <laughs> Um, typically our routine is we end the investigation at like 440 by the time we pack up all the ghost gear and load in the motor home and kind of clear out the space and make sure we didn't leave any trash. It's like 520 in the morning. Yeah. Then we get in the motor home. We shower when we can. Luckily we can shower tonight. We have water here. Yay. Thank God. Um, or go to sleep and eat snacks. And normally we're asleep by six in the morning mm -hmm. and then we legitimately wake up at the next location. Yeah. Cause someone drives while we sleep. So we'll sleep from like 6 AM to 2 PM. Literally I woke up here at like 2 14 PM threw on some sandals, brought the stage in with the guys, chairs, help the lights, check in everything. And then we go right into, we eat lunch, we go through the stories and then we do it all over again. Yep. Um, really hands on. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean like, really you know I mean? Like we brought this and like every chair that you're sitting in came from our trailer, the stage yeah. we're in, the bar stools, the sound, the cameras, the speakers, the lights, like everything that you see in here that makes the show yeah. possible is in our trailer. Yeah. Um, but we really wanted to make this tour personal. 
you know, like I've done a lot of stuff in the past, you know, with, I won't say like the company names, but obviously very familiar, you know, companies will do tours and stuff like that with creators. And it's like, I hate it. Like even just like the meet and greets, like they don't even give us a chance to talk. It's like they take one snap and then immediately security's like, all right, go. Yeah. And it's like, I hate that. Like, I really like that we're, you know, doing this ourselves and we yeah. kind of decide how it goes. And, yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like it's hot as in here, but like also this is cool. Like, I don't know if you guys looked around, but this is pretty cool. Like we're in an abandoned elementary school right now. And we, you, you know what yeah. I mean? We got 87 people in a classroom that holds 12 elementary students. <laughs> You know, with two cameras, we got chalkboards with all the paranormal investigation teams that have been here. We got the Our Father prayer written by a child over here. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's pretty f cool. And, like, I'm glad we did it here. And, you know, the AC, this is cooler. Yeah. Uh, easy. Yeah, I don't know. Hey. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. Thank you. For the, for the record, though, for the record, it's not just us. Like, it is Kyle, it is Marty, it is Ginger checking you in, Jenny, Riley, Jerry. Like, like straight up, we f wake up and we're here. You know what I mean? Like, it's not. It's only possible because of all them. Every night when we go, or every morning at 6 a.m. when we go to bed, we always say, all right, see you in another state. <laughs> yeah. Yo, for the record, I thought we died this morning. Do you know, Do you remember that? Did you? Okay, he sleeps through everything. I think we hit some weird off-road rumble strip patch of gravel, but I sleep above the driver's seat, and I felt everything just drop and shake. I was like, oh, we went off a cliff. I was like, I'm dead. I literally, I remember I grabbed Ginger and went, okay, bye. Like, this is, this is death now. I literally thought we died this morning. And then, and then I heard Jerry go, whoop. Oh. <laughs> and then we just kept pu kept on pushing, dude. <laughs> well. <laughs> what the f I had no idea about that. All right. What has been the best and worst part of tour life? Mm. I think I honestly, it's a bumpy sleep. It's literally waking up yeah. at like four hours into your sleep and going, oh, I'm dead. Like yeah. it's, it's that it's literally just being like, okay, bye. Yeah. That's probably, yeah. The, honestly, that's the worst part. That's the only thing I can really complain about is just the sleep. We get know? a little stinky sometimes, you know, lack of showering, crawling through abandoned prisons and stuff yeah, like but that. We all share deodorant. So. Yeah. And you know, we <laughs> swear to God, yeah, dude. you know how many times someone walks in, they're like, Corey, where's your deodorant? <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> All right, what's the best part? Ne next time, what, next time I'm just going to be like, Corey, what's your deodorant? Oh. <laughs> like, yo, let me get some cologne. <laughs> you spit on my hand. <laughs> All right, what's the best part? It's that, when you spit on... <laughs> I, I think the best part is this. I think the best part is like transforming spaces and doing shit like this. It's so cool. Like we set up at Old Joliet and we were outside with like the smokestacks behind us in the old rec yard. USS Salem, we're on the fantail. We have a bridge behind us. Like every place we've gone to, we get a whole cool environment. We meet a bunch of cool people and it's really cool. Yeah. I, and like no one's ever done something like this. And I say that and I checked my research and I hope no one does because they did. They stole my idea. <laughs> But I think this is like, this is a really, really cool thing. But next time we'll do it, not in summer. All right, final, final question. And uh, Marty, can you, can you cue some uh, spooky music real quick? And then after this last question, if Corey knows something's about to happen, it says, Corey, will you slash can you ever come up with paranormal choreography? <laughs> Normal choreography? What would be paranormal choreography? I don't know, dude. You're the dancer.
All right, thank you all so much. Have a lovely evening. You do want to come out, Marty? Get in here.